Okay, so we're going to be working on problems involving quadratics very similar to yesterday. Our question says the height of a ball is modeled by this function here. H at t represents the height, and t is our variable representing our time. So, what is happening at different points in time, the ball will be at a different height. The question is asking us when the ball will be 10 meters above the ground. Okay. So we need to set this question up. What would we do to set this question up? Mitchell Nader. Mitchell, yeah. <laughs> Apply your 10 meters to H. Exactly. H at T stands for height. And they want to know when the height is going to be 10. So we're going to replace H at T with the value of 10. So we're going to have 10 is equal to, and then the rest of the function, negative 5 T squared minus 10 T plus 250. Now, in order to do this factoring, we always set our equations equal to one value. What value do we set it equal to? Zero. So in order to do that, what do I do with this 10? Okay, and when we go to the other side, what does it become? Exactly. So the next line will read zero is equal to negative 5 t squared minus 10t. 250 minus will be positive 240. Now we just got to go through our factoring. What's the very first step of factoring? Common. Common factor. What will be our common factor here? Five. five. And not only is it just five, but because this value is negative, we want to get rid of the negative. It'll make it easier for us to factor. So we're going to factor out negative five. We'll get zero is equal to negative five t squared plus two t plus what is that? 4, 8? I think it's 48. We'll use a calculator just to make sure. 48, there it is. Okay, so. Follow on Twitter. We have, we've now taken out our common factor. The goal is essentially to get rid of our squared with our t. Okay, so we want to factor this trinomial we've created in the brackets. So in order to factor it, we find the factors of the first term and the last term. Because this is a trinomial where the a value is what? One, we can use a shortcut. We just need two values that are going to multiply to 45 and add to 2. Okay? Sorry, so 48, thank you. 48. So... Let's try to do this all in one step. We know this value is going to be t in both of them, the first term. And we just need two numbers. Oh, I think there was a mistake here. Yes. That should be negative 48. That should be negative. <laughs> Thank you. So, negative 48. What two values are going to multiply to negative 48 and add to 2? Um, 24. 8 and 6. Great. So, we need the 8 to be positive and the 6 to be negative. Okay? If you don't quite remember, just make sure you go through the factoring process for that. Those are the two values you should have got. Now that we have that, we know this negative 5 because it's going to be a constant and we're multiplying these terms by each other, it's not really going to affect our 0. What we're going to be doing is just kind of canceling it out. We divide both sides by negative 5. Okay. This will still say 0. These negative 5s cancel out, and we're left with t plus 8 and t minus 6. From here, these two values are being multiplied to create a 0, which means one of them must be 0. So we're going to test both of them out. We'll set both brackets equal to 0. 0 is equal to t plus 8, and 0 is equal to t minus 6. Okay. So our time is negative 8 or positive 6. Let's think about this question. Okay. Entire page. Which of these values is going to make sense? Something other than Mitchell. Oh, 6. Why 6? Because time doesn't go negative. That's right. We wouldn't be working with a negative time. Is that what you're going to say? Yes. Good. Thank you, Jeremy. So, 6 is the one that makes sense. So that means after 6 seconds, this ball would be at what? 10 meters. At 10 meters above the ground. So let's see if we can make a rough sketch of this quickly. Okay. 
We know that at the value of 6, and we'll zoom back in here. At the value of 6, the ball is going to be, let's say, 10 meters above the ground. We also know that it would actually also be at negative 8, something way back here. Okay? So, first of all, the A value is negative, so we have some quadratic going like this. Where's the ball being thrown from? What height? There's a value that will tell us in standard form what height the ball is thrown from. 250. 250. Okay, because the original question, our standard C value is 250. So the ball is actually being thrown from 250. Okay, so this is at 250. Is that the vertex? Yes, that's only the y-intercept. The vertex would be at what value? Negative one. negative one, that's right. We find the number right between our two values here, 6 and 8, negative 6 and 8. So we have an axis of symmetry at negative 1. And we know the vertex will have to be higher than 250. Okay. So we know it's probably coming up. This is the y-intercept. Comes back down, goes back to 6. Okay, I know I didn't draw it perfectly here. I apologize. That looks like a mountain. So our x value of the vertex is negative 1. I'm going to plug it into our factored form really quickly to solve what that actual value is, the max, the max height the ball would have been. Okay? So let's plug it in. We have 0. Sorry, not 0. It was called h at t. So the time when x is negative 1 is equal to negative 5. And t, in this case, is negative 1 plus 8. I'm plugging it into the factor form. Negative 1 minus 6. Okay. So that's this form here. You plug it into this guy here. Whether you did the standard factor, it made no difference. The height at negative 1 would have given us negative 5 times 7 times negative 7, which means negative 5 times negative 49. <coughs> Which will be 5 carried to 4, 245? No, that doesn't make oh, sense. Negative. I made a mistake there. What error am I making? Let me look at what. Here's the mistake I made, okay? And this is good that we made this mistake so we can see it. I plugged it into a factor form where we had subtracted 10 from the C value. So we weren't factoring actually at our 0. Okay? We were factoring a new value. We were looking at 10. So this wasn't the original equation. This wouldn't be the factor form of the original equation. So we don't have a factor form of the original equation, which means we need to plug it in to the original equation. Okay? So keep that in mind when we're going through that. If we do plug it in the factor form, it needs to be of the original equation. So let's put the original equation here in standard form. Negative 5. It was t squared, so negative 1 squared plus 10 times negative 1 plus 250. I actually think it was negative 10. I'm just going to double check. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Okay. So when we do this, Negative 1 times negative 1 will be positive 1, times negative 5 will still be negative 5. Negative 1 times 10 will be positive 10, and plus 250. This will give us 5 plus 250, 255. So in fact, oops, 255. When we found 245, what did we discover? We got what value? Does anyone remember? 245. That was how much lower than the true vertex? 10. And that is exactly the value we had subtracted from the C. Okay. So that does make sense as a value. The true vertex height is at 255, a little higher. So let's talk about the flight of this ball. Okay. Does it start at 255? No. If this is time? No. Where did it start? On the ground. Uh, did it start on the ground? It started in the person's hand. In their hand, and how high were they? Oh, 250 meters above the ground. Did the ball go up or directly down? 
Did it go up at all? From 250, okay, this is our y-intercept, so here's our h at t. From here it goes directly down, right, because parabolas don't all of a sudden jump up at one point. It goes directly down and at, 10, at 6 seconds it's at 10 meters. Was the ball thrown up into the air? It was thrown down. No. It was probably thrown down or dropped, right? 255 would have been the highest point on this vertex, but doesn't make sense in this because we can only start time at zero. So because 255 is at negative one, it actually, the ball was never that high. The highest point of the ball was 250, Mitchell. What happened to the 10 that we originally plugged in? That was to solve when the ball was 10 meters high. Okay. Yes. Okay, so let's get this in full view. That was good. We had a couple good questions to go through there, too.